Hey everybody, it's Ben. I'm working on my hybrid diesel electric pickup truck. Uh, right now I'm working on transmission stuff, which is kind of interesting because I really have no experience with uh, transmissions and clutches and those sorts of things. Um, I did wrangle up a four-speed manual transmission that uh, fits the Mercedes 240D uh, diesel engine. Um, and then I also have the old manual transmission from the Chevy S10. Uh, that was from either a 94 or 95, so it should be a Borg Warner T5. So what I want to do now is take the bell housing off of there and see if I can match that transmission up with the bell housing off of the Mercedes transmission. So here's the manual transmission from the Chevy S10. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It has these uh, big long brackets that connect the transmission to the end of the bell and those bolts had to be disconnected to get it off that old shot engine anyways in the first place. So the top two are completely gone. The bottom two are already loosened up, so I'll just have to take those out to uh, get these rods off. And then it looks like it's uh, pretty straightforward. As far as I can tell, I'm just seeing four bolts that uh, connect the bell to the transmission, and it looks like those are all from uh, the outside. So it looks like all I need to do is uh, take off these bolts and it should pretty much pop right off. Okay, these bolts on the bottom here are a 13, 13 millimeter. And it looks like here that uh, the bolts, these bolts holding the bell on are either a 15 millimeter wrench or a 50 millimeter Torx. And I happen to have that, so I'm gonna give that a shot. Lefty Lucy. There you go, 50 millimeter star bit or 15 millimeter bolt head. This might be a little easier to work on vertical, so I got a couple of two by fours to set on edge here. And I'll stand it up. See if maybe I can uh, maybe bust this loose with a mallet. Okay, I'm gonna should just lift right off now. Woo! Here we go. Okay, so there's the bell separate from the transmission. And I'll uh, get these both cleaned up and then take a look at the bell. Since that last video clip, um, it's been a little while. I've taken a break and hit the internet uh, to check on a few things. Here's the, uh, the T5 transmission with the bell housing removed. And let's go look at those bell housings. I've got them right by the engine here. So there's the engine. On the left is the bell housing off of the Mercedes four-cylinder uh, iron transmission, which is right here with the bell housing removed. And then the bell housing on the right is the one off the uh, Chevy S10. So if, uh, let's see. Zoom all the way out. A couple of things to think about here. On the engine starter is over here which lines up with Mercedes bell housing but on the Chevy one it's over here so if I want to use the Chevy housing on here it does not fit where the uh, starter is uh, one possibility would be to remove this plate make a custom plate and then um, however if I try to move the starter over here that um, doesn't really line up it gets in the way over here. Maybe I could move it, maybe not. I'm not positive. Uh, the other thing is that this whole mounting area on the Chevy transmission is much, much bigger than the mounting area on the uh, Mercedes uh, four speed. Uh, the face of the four speed is actually very, very small. So if I tried to put the, uh, uh, the T5 onto this bell, um, that would, I couldn't have the uh, hydraulics for the clutch right there, it'd be in the way. Um, but I'm thinking 
if I remove this, take off this, this, and this, that gives me that nice flat area, and then I probably could mount the T5 to this uh, bell housing with an adapter plate here, and then the end of the bell would use the original mounting points, starter can stay where it is, but I have to do something different then with the, uh, uh, the, the fork for the throw-out bearing. So maybe what I could do is modify the bell housing and maybe over here uh, cut it out and mount an arm similar to what we have over here. Now one thing I like about the idea of using the Mercedes bell but modifying it uh, is that I did finally found a, on a web forum somebody who did something similar on the Diesel Bombers web forum. Uh, there was a guy putting a, a Mercedes engine into a Chevy S10 using the T5 transmission and the bell for the Mercedes. And what he did was he uh, cut out over here and uh, mounted the hydraulics and the, the fork connection over there. Um, so I'm glad to see that somebody did that. So good to know, and hopefully I can do the same thing. Okay, so now I'm taking the uh, hydraulics for the clutch off here. And uh, after that, I'm hoping I can get the uh, S10 manual transmission to fit right on here. gross that would uh, need to get rebuilt, replaced anyways. Um, but I'll just set that off to the side. Now I got this to work with. Okay, here's the T5, the bell housing from the Mercedes manual. So I'm going to see. I can't quite get it on because these bars here are in the way so I'll have to remove those first. And one thing I can see right away is this is four and a half, five inches and this hole in the middle is much smaller. close. It's a little different angle of that. Hopefully this shows up a little better on camera. This doesn't quite go on all the way. Let's see this this is just a little bit too big for that but barely. But I think a spacer you know maybe a half inch plate or something is going to take up that much space anyway. So basically it should go on like this with some sort of an adapter plate right here. Okay, I just put the uh, bell housing back onto the Mercedes 616 engine. And if I measure inside there down to kind of the back of the crankshaft hole to a straight edge, I'm getting, looks like seven and seven eighths inches right there. So from the uh, inside the crankshaft hole to this mating surface, uh, just shy of seven inches. And over here on the T5 transmission, just measuring out from that flat mounting surface, it looks like seven and a quarter. So I'm gonna say, oh, well, probably three eighths inch spacer. Wow, that really gets up in there. I think just uh, thin flat plates all I'm gonna need. So that's it for today, but as always, make sure you check out 300mpg.org for the blog entry on this, uh, additional photos and information. See you next time.